Good luck. You might have to restart the stream. I'm not sure. No, you're good. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Hey. Asan, you there? Awesome. Well, I see we got a couple of viewers, so, uh, so a couple of new viewers. So let me let me let me start with our traditional uh, intro. And uh, shoot, it's hot. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this trade edition of the season's first X-Wing System Open. I'm your host, Peter Fu, sitting here for Chris Allen, and it's my privilege to bring you live coverage from our nation's first and best capital, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The System Open is co-sharing space with eight competitive games, ranging from the Star Wars universe to the Plains of Magic the Gathering. These events are only a small portion of the massive undertaking that is PAX Unplugged, Penny Arcades, Inc.'s uh, annual celebration of all things board games. The event organizer for today's proceedings is Cascade Games LLC. The Cascade team has been incredible from nuts to bolts, and it's been a great experience continuing the Cascade great relationship. The marshal for today's match is Ian Hemp, who hails from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. He's joined by Gus Dumanis, Louis Gal Gal Galasso, Pat Tyson, and Eric Skronkowski, all of which are from the Skull Squadron group, which is based out of Long Island, New York. On stream right now, we have Ted T and Josh W. Uh, these are some incredible lists, and uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, first, on, but there are first a couple things I wanted to talk to, talk to everyone about, uh, lessons learned from yesterday. Number one, the new format and the disregard for MOV has made people play with a furious aggression. Uh, what this means is most of our games, as, as you saw on stream, most of the stream games too, uh, finished well before a time was called. We were looking at an average uh, uh, average end time of about an hour in, as opposed to the normal 75. And according to Ian, only a handful of games actually did go to time out of the near 100 that were played yesterday. So what this means is... Without really changing any red dice or green dice mechanics, FFG has accomplished its goal of trying to reduce uh, the time consumption of X-Wing games as of, by simply implementing a new format. Um, it's a pretty awesome uh, way to, to implement a new rule change without screwing up too many game mechanics. So. Going through some of these lists, uh, Ted T is actually one of my local players from Philadelphia. Ted's, uh, he pl plays out of Showcase Comics, and he's actually one of these mad scientist Imperial players who has, for the past four waves, been trying to make the TIE Bomber or TIE Punisher work uh, to the point where he goes to store championships and regionals knowing that he'll probably lose because it's probably not the correct answer, but still persevering and hypothesis testing his theories and today we obviously see um, one of his latest theory um, work uh, he's had this is a five five one six zero table uh, so it's and, and Ted's the five one but I'm so pumped and so happy uh, that this is that all of his hard work and dedication to the Imperial uh, munitions effort have paid off uh, Ted's top aided a couple tournaments and uh, he's a great guy. He's never, uh, never has a bad word to say about his opponents, never blames dice or anything. And I can't, uh, I really wish him the best. On the other side, we have Josh W., who's from Burlington, Vermont. Uh, he doesn't really rep for, uh, any kind of uh, team or like, new, like, like the New England squad or the con men. Instead, he has a good group of core friends who play at a quarter staff games in Vermont. And, uh, and Josh has been pretty successful both inside uh, that vacuum of Vermont as well as regionally. He's won a couple of SCs and gone four two five ones on some regionals. So uh, he's obviously a very talented player. And I'm, 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 go I'm kind of interested at in seeing this, um, this, this twist on the Paul Heaver special from Naboo. Josh is flying Wolfaroo, 
with Predator, Hotshot Copilot, Ray, and Hull Upgrade. It's a PS7. Um, now, then he's got that traditional Just Pava with the M9 G8 and Integrated. And Lowrick with Self and Assist Wookie and Wookie Commandos. The, the fact that Josh was able to survive the onslaught of harpoons while obviously moving in formation, uh, I think it's, 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 it speaks very highly of his ability to see the board or it speaks very highly for him to win the RNG game. But because he's 5-1, and one, there's only so much the RNG can help you, so I, I got to think he's very talented uh, at seeing the board and flying formations, even against massive uh, splash effects. Thanks for catching that, Tartan James. This is, uh, we got to, I got to keep remembering that the taps come out incorrectly on default. Now this is pretty interesting. Uh, Ted normally doesn't go that aggressively with, with his munitions, uh, but you can see that he's trying to actually funnel uh, the formation into that alley straight into the bombers. And uh, the obvious impact is he wants to get that, uh, get, get those um, threat tracers off, uh, but he's baiting him uh, to kind of turn in it is a heavy tie. <laughs> yeah, it's very heavy. Uh, but it is a very interesting uh, deviation from what Ted normally likes to do. Uh, and, and maybe that little, this little quirk or, or twist is how he's been so successful today. Normally, he, uh, from what I've seen, Ted likes to fly uh, in a cube and along the side and forcing someone to commit, kind of like we, we saw with the triple Wookiee. Uh, strategy uh, played by Chris Allen. Yep. Yeah, we're going to see that funnel into that alley. And I think that's the right answer right now. So while we wait for them to do all the all this goofiness, thanks everyone for tuning in. We got a whole bunch of people in chat for this early in the morning, or relatively this early in the morning, and I'm excited to be able to uh, be with you this and 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 do a little commentary on these games this morning as well. Uh, I don't know if I'll be in the, here in the afternoon. Uh, hopefully, someone with more professionalism will be able to take over, or at least more experience. Um, but it is my pleasure to be able to speak with everyone here and you know how this goes uh, the Twitch chat is my co-host when I'm flying solo I'm happy to uh, answer questions or make updates uh, to the board as, as necessary Hmm. So it looks like Josh is uh, taking the bait and going after that lead Inquisitor. This means that those back two Inquisitors uh, are going to have a pretty nice shot from behind rounds uh, four and five, turns four and five of this engagement. Tartan, the <laughs> yeah. Let's just throw sick titles on the the the, the taps. Nothing, nothing could, nothing bad could happen with with that. <laughs> so, it, it, on stream so far, we've seen a variety of different flavors and uh, different list builds, um, and we got to actually thank Ian for that because Ian's been letting us take our pick from the top tables. So, because MOV doesn't matter in this format. Uh, the table one doesn't really matter that much. We've just been trying to give you the XO brackets. And of the XOs, Ian's been letting us pick whichever lists we want to see fly. The, the only list we couldn't get was the double fire spray. Uh, and that's because that player declined to be on stream. Uh, but 
you heard me right. There is a double fire spray in top 16 right now, and uh, it's it's very 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 uh, alpha heavy, with a nice uh, turn to engagement from the rear. That's a bread. By the way, that's a predator. Um, excuse me. It's a Wookiee reroll. I'm just popping over to to check the damage, and uh, Ted actually offered the cut. And I think it's a thrust control fire on. We're we're gonna call that Ink One. The baited ink. I do know the double fire spray list. It's uh, Boba and it's an Imperial. No. It's Boba VI with harpoons, guidance chips, and. Oh, sorry. I'm actually going to send. Either Zach Matthews or Zach Bart to get the get a photograph of the actual list. They should be in like in half an hour. They they just decided to sleep in today. And I wanted to really bring you this dream, so I said, I'll go in the morning. All right. Three hits to be rolling. It hits and everyone gets a target lock on our girl Jess. So Jess is going down. Hey Phil, so sorry. I I, I thought I knew the list, but I was proven wrong once yesterday. I don't want to have that happen again. So I want to double check and confirm. But it is two fire sprays at 10 and 7 with harpoons. Who's Mr. Lurie Real for four? They spend the reinforce, so that's a shield token off of Jess. So yeah, the fat finger. <laughs> Ted didn't fat finger it. Um, uh, he okay. Let me tell you this: he will never, uh, ever do something that's not uh, in his opponent's favor. He's kind of like John Lee from yesterday, the type to really give took takes you backsies all the time. And I think the measurement. Uh, with respect to the back tap was j j at Josh's request. Uh, he was trying to figure out his shots. Um, Uh, guys, so Ewan was there when the target lock to the back was assigned, so I think it was in range. I apologize that the camera angle uh, is making it look a little off, uh, but Ewan is there watching it, so I, I think everyone is, is, is straight. Everything is straight.
He filed. Excuse me. He fired one thread tracer and one cruise missile. So, I think the PS2 Swarm is an interesting thought because there's only so many dodge arcs you can dodge. And with, with the... Hassan, I'll probably hobble over in a couple minutes to, to, to check that. You could be right. Hey guys, I'm I'm actually uh, really it's my pleasure to introduce Ian Hemp. Uh, he's joining on on stream because uh, I mean he's really busy right now. But we begged and pleaded for him to jump <laughs> on, and uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Ian. He's the marshal for the event, hailing from the Valley of the Sun, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. He also represents from Phoenix Squadron, and he's been doing this forever. So it's, he's he's really. Uh, a godfather of the, the X-Wing world. <laughs> so without further ado, Ian, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, from Phoenix, I started Phoenix Squadron in September of uh, 2013, really as a means to uh, keep in contact with people back in Phoenix, uh, as a few of us were going to Worlds that year, but then it, it quickly turned into a lot of people kind of joining in and wanting to find games, you know, what stores were supporting the product. And so um, it just very quickly morphed into a community uh, that lasted a lot longer than what I had originally intended. Um, but it's it's been, so originally it was created to, you know, be uh, support the game and find players uh, and connect players with the game. But it's pretty much turned into a community where the game is almost sort of a, an aside uh, because we just all really like each other and like to hang out with each other, and this is just the excuse to do it. <laughs> That's really awesome, Ian. So you've been judging for two years now. What lessons learned do you have for people who are newer to the game, or sorry, newer to the judging scene, and how do they become better judges like you? Sure. So I think that um, you know, obviously, you've got to you've got to be up on the rules constantly. Um, and just really think through that. The, the biggest thing I see is uh, just people asking questions that, and, and, and then trying to answer questions, more to the point, that the bigger issue is trying to answer the questions without referencing where you're getting that from. You know, what, what page of the rules is this? Copy and paste, just, just you know, it, 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 all of the opinions that you can give in the world don't add up to much if the rule book or the FFG, uh, if the FAQ says otherwise. And so just copy and paste the FAQ and say, this is, this is how I drew this conclusion. Like, just put the evidence right there, out there in front of it. You don't have to argue your point if the rules in the FAQ say, here's what it is. So a uh, controversy yesterday from L5R, and yeah. I'm going to relay it back to X-Wing, was um, a couple players had... Uh, had email rulings from Nate French about some interactions in L5R. Uh -huh. And I was talking to Travis about this, and Travis had a good point. The email rulings from Nate were okay for Worlds because uh, Nate was an on site judge. Yeah. But how, so how do you treat like email rulings in X Wing? Well, first, my, my understanding is that. I mean, Frank and Alex got burned so hard for for you know for that a while back that they just don't do it anymore, and I think that's wise policy. Um, I mean, it, it drives us all a little crazy to not get official answers any more soon than the FAQ releases, which have been less frequent. But um, but I also think that 
there's 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 wisdom to that because um, uh, you know why why have things that are considered sort of half official like it's from the people that should make it official but it's not an official document just it's uh, yeah I think that's wise to to not have that just just get it released and of course there's complications with getting it released in an FAQ and we all wish it happened more frequently but um, but in the meantime uh, the collective wisdom of the community usually and you know uh, I've got a, a group of uh, premier level judges that I go to and, and make me look really smart when I come up with um, what I post in my Facebook group or in other Facebook groups that have really just been an amalgamation of um, a lot of effort by a lot of different people that come up with this is this is what seems to make sense rules as written let's try and do rules as intended as little as possible um, but sometimes there's situations where it, it, it almost has to be that way but but it uh, Rules as written is, is generally my, my go-to. I try and stay there. So, Ian, you're a pretty proficient x wing player yourself. Um, and we're, and sorry, chat, we're angled in such a way where it's kind of hard to see the table and the screen resolution isn't as large as we'd like to be on this laptop. What do you think about this this strategy to bump with that lead tie bomber? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I was thinking he was likely to do. Um, I mean, as soon as I saw the list, that's sort of... The, the the strategy. Um, I I run some similar things, and I would. Uh, it made a lot. Of, this list made a lot of sense to me. His setup and approach made a lot of sense to me. Okay. Yeah. So you liked coming in fast and baiting with that inquisitor. The. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. So. Uh, I think I might have hung back one more turn, but, you know. Uh, I play A-Wings with cruise missiles, and I, I run them with Deadeye and Intensity as the two upgrades. <laughs> so I can come in a little bit faster and a little bit harder, and, um, and so uh, it, just, it has a different flow to it than, than this. You don't have that luxury of, I can boost and also have a focus, and that's what I can shoot my cruise missile with. But, um, but yeah, so I would have to play the list probably to, to, to say for sure, but so you're interesting. On, you're on A-Wing bombers, Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Uh, so we got some tight action going on. We're trying to determine if it's range one or not. Uh, we had to proxy a ship. Uh, it looks like it's range one just based off of the ship, uh, just geosyncing against the ships. Uh, and again, Ted's one of those guys who will never call <laughs> rule of, who'll never ask for a ruling in his favor. I've actually played him in instances where he. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. oh Ian's Hold getting on. called. Yeah. Ian, we'll, we'll get you back in a sec. I think they're trying to measure out the range, whether the ship is in arc of, it's range one in arc, or if it's range two in arc, as opposed to the ship to ship rule, which you know caused a little controversy when it was written, the uh, first written. Uh, B. Griffith, yeah, I, I think we all agree he went a little fast. So, Ian, were they just trying to figure out if it was range one in arc? Yeah. Okay. So, it was just out. So, when you're when you're judging and when you're when you're looking at these matches, is it hard for you to hold back and not try to get in the game? You're like, hey, why why did you do that? Why did you do not do that? Or yeah, the most I allow myself is a smile usually. <laughs> like every once in a while, I. But you're forgetting this crit, but. I can't say anything, <laughs> uh, you know, so I always just look for, like, I think yesterday there was a game even on the stream where I wasn't watching all of it, but I think there was, there was a Thweak build where one turn Thweak missed the opportunity to attack. And, and you're absolutely right, because the Twitch chat jumped all over us on yep, that. Yep, yep. And we're and not allowed to get in no, the game. No, no. So you don't have to shoot. And, and speaking <laughs> of that, one of... One of the questions that Chris and I forgot to ask you in our pre-production interview was, how do you think FFG, or rather, how will you treat instant replay in this game in the future? Is it a tool that you'll use, or is it something that you'll try to be like a baseball empire and say, no, my eyes are, are, the, uh, are the final? You know, instant replay would be awesome to have, right? You usually don't. Um, and we instant replayed Naboo for the first time, world first last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, yeah, if it's if it's an opportunity, um, then I, I 
I wouldn't have any, like, I would be all over that, right? Like, especially an asteroid gets moved or something like that. Like, video is, is huge for that sort of thing, so you can really get it back to right where you wanted it. Do you think we need rules for instant replay, or is it more of a, I'm the marshal, what I say is the rule? Uh, I think we need rules for a lot of things in X-Wing that we don't have, okay. right? So that, <laughs> I, I think there's down, at some point that might be a logical thing to approach, but I think it's, it's down on my list of priorities. Okay. So after this traffic jam in round four, yeah. how do you think uh, Ted, the Imperial player, approaches trying to get behind these uh, Wookiees? Let me take a look. Okay. Hi, um, Runner Arizona. It's actually Ian from your neck of the woods. Uh, you know, Ian Hemp, the the the, the marshal, and uh, we're actually getting some insight into how Ian would play the games and and things like this. Jess has no shields, and Lorik has no shields. All right, so from what I saw, I might, uh, I might try and take 14 okay. and take it over the rock, because he's got a target lock. He'd move speed four, right? Still got a missile, I think. Yep. Um, and then use the other, uh, uh, what are they called? I, the the Inquisitor. No, the, yeah, uh, the tap. Tap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tide Dance Protocol, yeah. Uh, so I would use the other one as a blocker, like just a one-speed turn, something like that. Um, I, I like that kind of YOLO approach on, on rocks, and it kind of reflects your use of A-wings, and, yeah. I, and I, I love it. The bombers are a lot... Uh, the bombers just don't have the dial to do, you know, the, the tricky kind of stuff as much. Uh, I've been running a lot of those this summer, and... But uh, so I didn't take a, as close a look there. But uh, you kind of have to play the long game with them. Ian, uh, I don't know if you know Twitch handles, and we certainly don't want to dox people. But Runner Arizona, you know. <laughs> I don't know who that is. But uh, oh, you know what? I I, I suspect I might. Okay, so yeah. uh, he, he wanted to give you the Go Phoenix Squadron shout out. Right on. Isofane, this is the uh, first system open of the 2018 season. And we are in round uh, seven, which is the first of the single cut elimination rounds. Yep. And Ian, you're absolutely right. He YOLO'd the rock. Yep. And, cool. and yeah. takes no damage. He has full shield, so yeah. Target lock and guidance chips gets you a pretty decent missile shot. No problem, Isofane. Now, if you're this rebel player, you know he's trying to get behind you. What kind of mitigation steps can you take to prevent uh, a total uh, route from behind? I don't know. The, the dials on these ships and the you know repositioning abilities are not significant. Um, I mean, you, I guess you've got boost on the uh, X-Wing. So... Um, I, I may not be the right person to ask because I hate flying. Re like I fly A wings because they don't fly like a rebel ship. Yeah. Right. I just any time I try and like put a bunch of slow rebel ships in, uh, just no. I, I mean, I can I can do okay with it, but yeah, it's not my it's not my jam. Um, but the you know the interesting thing about the the Wookies, of course, is that they've got they can sneak up on you in terms of I can move here and still attack you because I've got this side arc and if you're not used to playing against that a lot then it can catch you by surprise oh we got the Jess Talon yep we are we are she's going to be I mean she's got a, she's got the pilot skill on the uh, on the, on his squad right yep. so um, and she's down to she's so like she's probably out of it this turn anyway Oh, if he's if he's got a missile shot, right? Yeah. Oh, that's thanks, guys. Ian's gonna pop over there real quick. So Ian's a lot to do with. We can't do it. Um, we've actually been told explicitly by uh, event personnel that 
we're not allowed to say anything with respect to the game state. Um, there was a, I think in round three, we were allowed to, we, we, there was something we wanted to say. Uh, we asked one of the event organizers, because Ian wasn't around, and they asked that we stay out of the action. And it, it is round seven, and they are exhausted. So that's a really good point. Um, board Ponyu. Board and Ponyu. <laughs> um, Ian, do you play Unicorn in L5R? I, <laughs> I, I don't play L5R. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hassan, it is the first round of the day, but we went till like 12 last night, and uh, I have a feeling a lot of people took uh, hotels farther away from the convention center. And then we have the marathon. <laughs> right. I wish it was us being hungover. I've been trying to buy Ian a beer for three, ma <laughs> three days, no, four days, including yep. Naboo. Yep. And we just, everyone's just so exhausted at the end of the day. I'm off at six today. <laughs> So you mentioned that you you don't like these slow rebel ships. Yep. How do you feel about the new uh, Fen Rao coming out? Of uh, not Fen Rao, the new addition to the, sure, the, sure. the gunboat. Sure, sure. Yeah. I uh, I mean, I definitely see that it, it's it adds a an interesting new toolkit, right, to the rebels. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly I certain I see it having some significant play. I'll be interested to see how it. Um, how well it replaces the Phantom, just the regular Phantom. But it's, you know, I, I guess it's funny for me to say I don't like flying, flying the uh, slow rebel ships because I really like flying TIE bombers lately, but um, <laughs> they, just, they just have a different feel to them. You're on TIE bombers as well? I yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my big win this, uh, I mean, I, I want to, we had a best in the West tournament that was like 70 players, and I won that with TIE Swarm. But... I, you know, Tie Swarm is my jam. Um, that but that then is a lot of painting. That's five <laughs> hits. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But with all the low rig shenanigans and reinforces and everything, and re rolling Wookiee commandos, right. we take two damage, three damage, four damage, five. We take all five on Jess, so Jess is off the board. Yep. No, I would not. So Elemental Surfer, I think that's a great point that you mentioned. And we have been asking people to try to roll on that side of the board. But you know how it gets. People forget. We're getting the thick of things. And they're just trying to get good dice as opposed to rolling dice for our benefit. Um, normally when we have the entire crew here, we have, like yesterday with, with either the Zax or Jeremy, we, we have a damage runner. And uh, we'll get that. We'll get that shortly because someone's getting knocked out soon. And unfortunately, uh, but fortunately for us, whoever gets knocked out will be able to join me on stream. Yeah. So M9G8 Jess is out. Can Wolferu pull this off? Because Lorik, I don't think Lorik can do this by himself. Uh, yeah. Um, did we... So the health on the... Uh, I'm just looking at the health on the... Okay. So we got one left on the... Huh. The, I think the, the tap is the scarier of the ships to leave around on the board. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so I think you know targeting priority is good there. Because the bombers... Again, you have to play the long game. You have to kind of... I mean, you can rotate them out and rotate damage out. But it, it takes a while because they're... Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Their maneuvers uh, just just aren't where you would want them to ultimately be to, you know, line up. Like, get the, I, with the bombers, kind of fly out, regroup, come back in for another wave. And that, but he's got time. I'll go take a look at the board. Cool.
And you know, Hassan, um, because I know people are just tuning in now. I think there's a way. Yep. There is a way I can take off munitions from the overlay. There we go. Just so you know, um, Ian Ian actually caught that the the gunship got bumped a little bit um, right before someone's a fell's wrath said it, uh, and he went up real quick. Um, but both players discussed it, and I guess they were okay with the placement. So there is a signar still on the board. Yep, uh, on the that corner. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got it. How do you feel about the convention so far, Ian? It's an interesting place to hold something like that. You know, conventions are always a little bit sketchy to, I think, to, to hold. It, it's, it's a dicey situation to hold this kind of event. And it, it, X-Wing does not translate as well to this sort of venue, I think, than that other like card games do. Um, with the, uh, you know, we've got a lot of noise right next door with, with all the PAX fun happening. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so on one hand, you know, when you walk, if, if, you, if you lose early or if you just, you know, you have time between your X-Wing stuff, if that's what you came for, there's lots of other stuff to do, which is cool. But, um, but it's, it's a lot of noise. We, we have a speaker and a microphone, and we haven't used it the whole time because we can't get our noise over the other noise. So I just been I've been losing my voice the whole time. Oh, sorry. Uh, one second, yep. folks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Ian's got to go do his job yeah, for a moment. Ian's got to go do his job real quick. Uh, someone actually called for the marshal, a judge, and they're appealing the judge's decision to Ian. I wonder what the the contract. Oh, so while we're waiting for action in our game and to maybe get Ian back, um, <clears throat> the breakdowns from yesterday were 38 Imperial, 34 Scum, and 64 uh, Rebel. You heard me right. That's 64 Rebel. Uh, it's <laughs> so Rebel Jank is alive and well, and while a lot of top players from the X Wing community thought the ships to be on were going to be Asajj, uh, Asajj and Fenn. Uh, it turns out Miranda, Biggs, Lorik are still very powerful options in this meta. So you know, we were just talking about the uh, the breakdown of lists uh, yesterday. We had 38 Nymphs, 32 uh, Scum, and then 64 uh, Rebel. Did you, did you anticipate Rebel Jank making that hard? Uh, coming back that hard? You know, it was hard to anticipate what would come out of that FAQ and the... I mean, it's a pretty sizable meta shift. It was almost like welcome back to, you know, wave eight, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I'm really... Uh, when stuff like that happens, I, I get really excited for the health of the game. Mm -hmm. I think that the diversity that we're seeing at the top tables um, is fantastic. I love that there is a dual fire spray list, uh, you know, at the Mandalore event, you know, right? So exactly. that's that's the awesome. The Iboba too. Right. Yeah. Um, we actually did some uh, calculations on the on, on the podcast before. It turns out that as a function of each, if we take uh, November, uh, October to November of this year as a function of each world's from the preceding years, there's a, there's almost a 0.9 0.9 more ships per table per game uh, in our current meta than ever before. Yeah. So FFG is doing its job and trying to right. get more ships, on, more of the product on the board. Uh, and this is despite all the complaints about bigs and everything. Right. Uh, we, we're having more stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Joshua took a second to go talk to a friend. Yeah. Uh, Ted actually had his wife come deliver him donuts and coffee <laughs> earlier before. Um, this is a, obviously a very competitive game, but both players are taking it pretty casually. And it's good to see that they're, they're, they're concentrating but still having fun. Yeah. What was your favorite list yesterday outside of the fire spray? Hmm. Uh, I've, I've been having a good time. It's been interesting to watch uh, how people have been using Thweek. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I haven't seen anybody use the, the Mimic ability yet. It's been pretty much been shadowed for the most part with Thweek, which makes a lot of sense. You know, That's a pretty cheap pilot skill 9 ship if you... You can get it. And you know, I'm, pr I'm proud to be able to say hi to uh, Chris, who's coming on to the stream today hey, for the first so time this morning. I just morning. wanted to come apologize to Steve for killing his family member. He didn't do anything wrong, but the Wookiees got him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to Coruscant, baby. Congratulations, Sweet. Steve. Uh, and you'll remember Steve was on stream at the very end yesterday. Felt really bad for Mike Darcy from Nova, who Chris played, because it was basically eight on one uh, yeah. with all the cheering. But uh, uh, whatever, the good guy won. <laughs> They're the Royal Guard Wookiees. They're not terrorists. <laughs> All right, I'm um, going to go keep an eye on things. Cool. Thanks, thanks Chris. Thanks again, Peter. No problem. So sorry about that, Ian. Uh, I, I missed a little bit of that. What was your favorite list again? I, I don't know about list, but, you know, the, um, the, the different tweak builds uh, yes. and seeing that they, you know, they, they've mostly been using Shadowed instead of Mimicked. Um, yeah, that tweak. So... Uh, Nami and uh, Jeremy Chambly from uh, the Kessel Run have been really big supporters of Thweek, whereas all the other podcasts have called Thweek garbage. And it looks like uh, the Kessel Run has been right because Thweek is unintentionally uh, the, the foil to most Imperial Ace lists. He's coming in with a four-point four bid most of the time, and he's stealing Soonter PS9, Darth Vader, PS11, whatever. Yeah. So this is pretty awesome. That's a, that is a pretty awesome ship to see. Yeah. How, what do you th what, are your, what are your thoughts about the fact that most of the Rebel jank doesn't revolve around uh, Miranda X? Uh, again, it's it's just another sign of a healthy meta, right? So um, I mean that, that and that's not to say that Miranda isn't isn't solid still, right? But yeah. Um, but yeah, with uh, you know, I, I'm not even convinced necessarily. Do we still have? I don't know if we have bigs still in the uh, in any of the top tables. I think there but might be one yeah. uh, big Slorik. Uh, like I think in the right build, yeah. he's still fine, right? Um, I saw we just had a big um, 108 player over three months, like big event, uh, the Phoenix Squadron Championships happened, and um, and the at the finals. Um, Biggs Kanan still made it to the top four uh, and kind of rocked it throughout. So um, he's still got, he's still there. Cool. And Ian, this is the first time I've ever seen Ted play, and I've seen him play five, six times, where he's actually moved around to check arcs. Ted is, Ted is, Ted feels like he could win this, and he's, he's, tr I'm really happy to see this side of Ted. <laughs> I really am, because the knives are coming out, and he's smiling and, and being a good sport about everything, but he's feeling that th that Coruscant invite. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, do we know anything about uh, Coruscant and if you're going to go judge it or not? Um, so I've got the, the relationship. Uh, I've got a good relationship with, with Cascade Games and with FFG, um, but I would, I would suspect, you know, um, for FFG, it's it's at their event center, right? They've got some really good ringers there that can they can judge things. So um, I think they'll be fine without me. But uh, but I wouldn't I I would suspect that this is probably not my only system open that I'll do throughout the series. Um, we just need to find out where more of them are, and um, you know I'll work with Cascade. We, um, we you know Cascade has worked with a number of really amazing marshals. Um, and so geographically and also just availability wise, um, there'll, there'll probably be a few of them that kind of help them out throughout the, the series. Uh, Ted, well, we're looking at, see the clock is off. I think we have like 20, 25 minutes left. I think Ted needs to kill one Wookiee. 
uh, and he's set. Yeah. Hey guys, is this on? Yep, Chris is back. Hey, so I'm playing the winner of this game, so I'm gonna come spy. Okay. Well, why don't you? Why don't I move over so you get a better look? Oh, sure. that works. Yeah. So this game has just over 30 minutes left. Gotcha. Oh, thank you. So, uh, Chris, I just asked to Ian what his favorite uh, list from the couple, last couple of days has been. It's what mine, you? right? <laughs> I'm biased. I don't remember this week that was in your list. I <laughs> Oh, I brought a good list. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So how's how you how has this meta treated you? Are there things you wish you could have done with the uh, instead of the three uh, three X Wookiees? So Wookies? the Wookiee bad matchups are uh, very very strong alpha strikes. So I'm really hoping that I play the Wookiee mirror and not the five cruise missiles because I can I can deal with one cruise missile or two cruise missiles. I can't deal with five. Probably. Actually, I might be able to PS kill some Sinars. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, how has the convention been outside of X-Wing? Have you had a chance to walk around, I, talk to people? All I've been able to do is to stream in X-Wing, so I, <laughs> I have no insight there. Well, before Ian jumped on, before Chris jumped on, Ian was talking about Cascade Games and all of their resources and utilities. And because we're 30 minutes in, just want to take a chance to thank the Cascade team for allowing us to be here. They're offering 30% off of all their products today. So if you have friends here, or if you're here yourself, I'd really recommend strongly that you go support these guys, these sponsors that have done so much for us. And in addition to that, support their effort and bring great judges like Ian to these types of events. A lot of you don't know this, but um, for you newer listeners, Ian's from Arizona. Cascade Games actually paid for uh, Ian to come here all the way from Arizona, paid for it in his hotel. And it's just part of their commitment to the judge program and bringing an excellent experience to our excellent community. So support Cascade if you can. And uh, I don't know, would you call yourself part of the Cascade team now, Ian? Yeah, close enough, right? I mean, I, I am technically em I am employed by them right now as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. Um, they're really fantastic to work with. Um, Steve is, is phenomenal. Um, he and I have done, this is my third system open with him, and uh, it's just a really good time, and uh, it, it, we work well together. And, um, and then, you know, this is the second time that I'm working with this, this uh, judging crew that's here for the most part, because just about all of them were at Naboo, too, and um, they're fantastic. I'm going uh, to check on the health of things over here. Yeah. And Thanks, i got to go get back to the other two. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chris. So Chris is feeling it too. He's in the top eight, and I've told him from day one that I think he's going to go X1 and that he's going to get to the top table. I hope um, the crate gods prove me right, and um, we're going to see a Chris Allen final table again. <coughs> so there is a scimitar that's been uh, destroyed, and the other one's down to either one or two health. The Wookiees are, are um, there's one shield on Wolfer. Yeah. So Ted's got a pretty tough win condition now. We're looking at about 25 minutes left in the round, a 10 minute differential between the round actual time and the uh, time on the stream. And I think, I, I'm not sure who said it, I think it was Board Toponio or B Board and Ponyu. It's going to be pretty hard for two dice red to punch through two yeah. Wookiees. Yep. There's, uh, I think there's one shield off on the uh, Sinar that's left, too. Looks like. <coughs> so, uh, so for the Twitch chat, uh, and I'm going to pose this question to Ian as well, but... Who's looking like the favorite to be at the top tables today? I, I mean, and it I doesn't even I, have to be names; just lists that right. you've seen that yeah, yeah, yeah. have the answers. Um, you know, I'd have to go look. I, I think that uh, the I forget his name, but the the guy who's running the dual fire sprays, 
he know he clearly knows that list inside and out, right? He he, yeah. So um, and and uh, thematically, uh, I guess if I if there was one I would root for, that would be it. But um, I'd have to take a look. I'll take I'll take care of them and I'll go take a look and I'll answer that question. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I, I. yeah. I think a lot of people underestimated Triple Wookies, and out of that, out of the North, the North Carolina scene, Triple Wookies has slowly been bleeding out to the to the general uh, public. Uh, it started with Vassal, and then Chris started streaming it with some people. Um, it's twenty four health is nothing to laugh at, first of all, uh, but its ability to mitig control your red and uh, it, it increase its own green are pretty powerful. Hassan, I think uh, an Imperial List is going to win the hyperspace, the second hyperspace qualifier, which is going on today. Um, it's it's Duncan, Duncan's on the warpath, and um, I think I think he's going to do it. Now Ian's gonna go run around to take a look at lists to think to to see wh which have the answers to make it to the top two tables. Um, as for me, for what it's worth, I think we're gonna see Rebel Jenkins against that Imperial Fire Spray. I'm sorry, that D Dual Fire Spray. It's it's just got so many answers to the Scum Jank as well as the Ramp Rebel Jank. Um, and so many people haven't played at Fire Spray in so long that not many people remember its style. Actually, I'm going to ask Ian to tell us about the Fire Spray. He's walking back now, but uh, he'll be able to confirm some more details. So, Ian, um, what, what looks good on those top eight tables so far? Um, well, the um, the dual fire spray list it looks like it's in trouble. It didn't get either of its harpoons off, so oh. I'm not sure that it's looking good. Um, you know, one of the things that I notice out there is that um, there's an awful lot of um, of jump masters, despite the nerf, right? So it's the quote unquote nerf, right? I mean, I I sort of as a lark ran four of them with trick shot at uh, <laughs> at a at a um, a store championship this summer <laughs> and the only reason like I made top four and then had to drop because I couldn't get back for day two um, <laughs> uh, and so at 25 points just you know you could remove every upgrade on that ship and it's still a solid platform <laughs> we're about to go into top eight yeah um, Chris is still in uh, and we're about mm, 20 minutes from time being called uh, do you can you tell us a little more about that dual fire spray Ian yeah um, so it it's, uh, I think I actually have it written down. Hold on one second. Cool. Ian's more responsible. I was trying to go off my memory. And Duncan can save all, including himself, Hassan. So Stephen Lee, Kath, and Boba, they both, I believe, have Harpoon. Let me see here. Okay, yeah. So I believe it is Kath with uh, BI, K4, Scavenger Crane, Harpoon, and Chips. And then uh, Boba with Adaptability, uh, K4, Glitter, Harpoon, and Chips. <laughs> What's he playing that he hasn't gotten the Harpoons off? Uh, it was a Jumpmaster Fenrau something, I think. Wait, was he playing against Grasser? No. Okay. Hey, Tim. One second. Are you advancing? Yeah. You want to come say hi? Yeah. 
And now we're happy to be joined by Tim Hilton, uh, founder of the U.S. National Rankings, or actually the World National Rankings. World Rankings. Not, not the world yet. I don't have that much time. Just the U.S. Nationals. Yes, okay. just U.S. Even and, uh, Canada, I can't even get Canada together. More importantly, two-time store championship winner, multiple regional top fours, and runner-up to the U.S. Nationals. So, Tim, tell us a little bit about what you've been seeing, what's led to your success today. Uh, uh, yesterday, I saw a lot of different stuff. So I saw two rack lows. I played against um, Wookiees. There were a couple. There's, there's definitely some Wookiees out there. Um, then today and yesterday, um, played against, I had to play Jade twice in this tournament. She's running a really interesting Nora Miranda Rex build. Um, unfortunately, my list does not cater to her very well. <laughs> um, I just, I just, uh, you know, killed the boogeyman for me, Nimranda, which knocked me out of nationals last year, or just past nationals. Um, flown very well by Parker. Uh, so it looks like next I'm going to be flying against uh, Andrew Bunn's Paratani. So that's going to be brutal, I think. I, I, that's going to be a tough matchup for me. Andrew's been flying Paratani for two years now right yeah or three uh, ways however long yeah. it's been like a thing he has been flying it so he's he is excellent with it you know um <laughs> you got you got to say something about perseverance and saying i'm going to commit <laughs> to this list for two years mm -hmm. yeah i mean he and he wrecks with it i like kudos to him i can't do it i i, I was i was looking at running the same list that uh, grasser was with the analdra fen and uh, massage that's fun um he's uh grasser is actually undefeated he had to buy this round because we had 14 players so uh the top one and two undefeated they had to buy this round um but he's doing so so he's doing well <laughs> you could top say. eight yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Tim, um, we touched upon it a little bit uh, before, but can you tell us a little about the rankings site that you run? Yeah, so um, we're doing, I do top 50 rankings. Uh, I base them off of people's performances uh, across store championships, system opens, nationals, regionals, worlds. Um, they all get put in there. Everything above a store championship gets put in there. I have to, like, even if I have to call stores and pester them to get me uh, final standings, I'll get it store championships. I don't have that much time. So I don't do that. But if they're on List Juggler, they, uh, they get added. So I had about a final of 250 store champs that I added. So a total of 317 tournaments were added, 3,000 X-Wing players. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, it's actually Fen hat no, PTL, Atani is on Asajj, and um, Inaldra has Atani as well. Okay. No, yeah, so no. Is Asajj this Grasso or Paratini? All right, Par uh, the Paratani is Asajj and Fen have Mind Link and the Jump as Adapt. So we can Adapt down or up. Okay. And then the Fen is Mind Link, Fen, Asajj, uh, Mind Link, Fen, Mind Link, and Aldra, Lone Wolf, Asajj. Um, so the, the rankings, I'm going to be taking off the regionals this week from last year, and they'll start over because we have a first regional on Thanksgiving weekend up in Pittsburgh. So congrats to you guys. Um, so the first thing that will be on those rankings will be this event. So whoever wins this is going to be number one for a minute. So it won't be Duncan. It won't be Duncan it for once. It won't be Duncan for once. But, uh, so, but I am going to maintain um, power rankings as well, so he'll probably still be on top there. Um, so there will be two separate rankings on there, and I'll, I'll, I'll write a nice little blurb about why I'm doing it and all that other stuff. So we have an amazing... Did the Wookiees come out on top? Did the Wookiees come out on top? I don't know. Uh, Did the Wookiees come out on top? Uh, it looks like they are going to. Oh, the game's not over. No, okay. not yet. No, no it's over. I'm, I'm up against the winner of this. Oh, it is over. Yeah, Wookiees won. Yep. So, Tim, uh, we have an awesome community, obviously, and all people are always asking how they can help, what they can help with, especially since Chris refuses Patreon. Uh, what can people do to help you with the rankings? Uh, just sending me final standings. I mean, really, like, if you, have, if you are at a regional or a store champ or anything above a store champ, just send over into the, onto the, into the website the final standings, uh, full Swiss and the cut, if you can. If not, I, I, I do research and look at look to find them all so it's not really that big of a deal but that really does help but yeah no 
Chris Chris does so much for the community. I uh, he actually commissioned me to paint some Wookies, and he tried to pay me for it. I said no way. I'm like you already do way too much. But anyway, I have to go and find and uh, possibly go start playing now and lose. So, <laughs> but I have now two invites to the Coruscant Invitational, but I can't transfer them, which stinks. Oh. Well, congratulations for your performances today, Tim. Thank you so much for showing, uh, coming on this, uh, the stream with us. And thank you for having those uh, top 50 rankings to massage our egos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's all, <laughs> that's all they're there for. Um, just real quick, it was top 16. Uh, there were only, but there were only 14 people that made the cut. So two people had to buy, and there were six games played. They're now jumping into the top eight um, because the way the um, these are working now is five and one and better. They are the only people to make the cut. There isn't a 32 cut. Now there's an, there were enough players for a top 32 cut. It's just this is now the the new way of doing uh, the system opens, which I kind of like because it means MOV doesn't matter, even though I had. Uh, the best MOV, even with one loss, but still. Anyway, have Thank fun, guys. And uh, Wadsworth and Wadsworth uh, died too, and others. We're going to get into a little more of the format issues when I get um, some more help. Uh, I think I think this will make for a pretty lively discussion and debate. Uh, so I'd like to reserve it, uh, but I will be addressing it in round two. That said, thank you so much for tuning into this uh, first round of the cuts, day two, system open, Mandalore. Um, and tune in in about 10 minutes, which is 11.55 Eastern Standard Time, U.S., for our round two coverage of the cuts.